Good morrow gamers, or good day. Uh, I'm Dan from Game Reviews AU and welcome to my next review, this being King's Bounty 2. So I never played King's Bounty 1, but yes I'm getting to play King's Bounty 2 on Nintendo Switch. And it's a confusingly okay, I think I like it kind of game. Now, the confusing part is the character models are really quite ugly. The voiceovers are really quite wooden and uh, there's not really a lot of life in each of these characters' voices. But I thought the golems were only to be found at Crucis. The mage Rossum took them to clear a landslide. So all of that part kind of makes you go, oh, okay. I don't know if I can read the story, you know, hear the story and be interested in it when things look like this and sound like this. But then when you start to play the game, you start to realize it's actually quite a fun game. So basically you choose your character, you get released from prison and you're sent out to do some heroic deeds and stuff. Now, along the way, you will uh, you will gather troops, troops that you use in combat, and combat is played out on a hexa grid sort of thing. It's very reminiscent to Heroes of Might and Magic, which is why I wanted to try it out. I like that kind of turn-based combat with the grids and stuff, and I must say, in King's Bounty 2, the combat is pretty cool. The first few battles you'll do are quite simple and pretty easy to do, but you can see how much more difficult it's going to get in the in the de further down the track. The maps will get bigger, the enemies you're up against will be stronger, and there'll be more of them, and you'll have to set up your team to uh, complement each other so you'll need your long-range dudes to sit at the back and take out the baddies from a distance whilst your tank or melee troops will stay at the front and completely protect your ranged troops hopefully they will protect them completely so the gameplay between combats it's uh, your character that you've created running around a relatively linear world. There are little extra sections you can explore that will open up side quests to grant you gold, troops, XP, items, uh, new gear, and the like. And I'm just annoyed because you can't sprint your horse cannot gallop. I don't know why you have a horse if it doesn't gallop or even canter. It just does, it just trots along. So it's kind of like a 1.5 times speed increase from your normal character moving around. There is a button you can hold down to make your character or horse walk. I don't know why you'd want to, maybe for screenshots, that kind of thing. But when you're in these little explorey areas, you'll be able to gain treasure from boxes and barrels and treasure chests and the like. Some treasures might even be hidden, which need you to run around to find little things to uh, put into place and then unlock a little trapdoor that has a treasure behind it. Other times you might be traveling through a portal to another area to speak to a quest giver and he will then tell you to go activate runes. I mean there's there's more to it than that but these are the first couple things that you will encounter. There will also be times that you will need to choose a side. You might come across uh, some, well yeah in the game you come across some humans and some dwarves fighting or well, having a disagreement and basically uh, you can either join the humans to kill the dwarves, or join the dwarves to kill the humans. So one option will grant you, 
you know, better riches but less reputation or whatever, and the other will give you better reputation and less riches. So more reputation. Um, yeah. Anyway, so you get to make a choice, and these choices will have repercussions along the way. And I think that's kind of cool. When you knit everything together in King's Bounty 2, it does make it a pretty cool game. It's got good combat, it's got the idea of having a choice as to how your character is perceived in the game. It's kind of fun that you get to explore and find little hidden treasures and stuff like that and do little side quests. But just the character graphics, the character models uh, of you and the NPCs, not so much your troops. Your troops look pretty cool. But the, yeah, that and the voice acting, they're the main drawbacks. If you can see beyond them, you'll probably really enjoy this game. And I did have a pretty good time with it. It's not something that I would be willing to play all the way to the end. But it's something that's kind of fun. It, it gives you that little bit of entertainment in terms of uh, army type combat and oh, troop awesome. management and stuff like that. Your character, I forgot to mention, can also cast spells in combat. And your character will have a talent tree that you put points into as you level up. So there's that kind of uh, um, room for improvement for your character and yeah, expands, expanding your abilities and you know, stuff like that. So I'm going to be giving King's Bounty 2 on Nintendo Switch 4 out of 5 stars. If you like this review, please hit the thumbs up button down below. Remember to subscribe, and if you do so choose to do so, leave a comment down below. Also check out my Patreon page, consider pledging a few bucks, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.